In the previous video, we learned about client-side events using tag helpers. Using the client-side events, we tie together our date picker tag helper and our tree view tag helper to create a custom filter experience for our data grid on the right. We're going to continue with this pattern and use it to power our charts here above the data grid. So let's jump over to our code and start writing some tag helpers. In our application, we have a partial named quarter to date sales chart. Let's open that up, and inside we have an image that is holding a place for that chart. We don't need this anymore, so we'll remove it. And we'll start by saying kendo chart. So this will initialize a chart tag helper. We need to give it a name. We'll call this employee quarter sales. We're going to set auto binding to false because we're handling the bind data binding client side and we're triggering it when somebody chooses from the dates in the employees. Next, we'll set the theme to Nova. And this is going to give us a consistent look and feel with the rest of the application. And we'll also set a style. And this is a normal HTML style. Notice we get IntelliSense with this as well because we're using tag helpers. And we can move in and out of HTML and C Sharp and still get IntelliSense. We'll set up our series default and give it a type. And this is going to define the type of our tag helper. This is a chart that is of a bullet type. Next, we can add some series items. So let's add a series item. And we'll set the current field to current. And the target field to target. So when we receive data across the wire, we'll have an object that has a property of current and a property of target, and this tells the chart how to bind the data to those fields. Next, we need to set up a data source to tell our tag helper where to get the data from. So we'll define data source and a transport. And on that transport, we need a read action. So for the read action, we'll use a URL.action. So we'll say URL.action, and we're using the employee quarter sales action on the employee's controller. So this is where we're setting our data source for, from our back end. We also need to set up some custom data to come back across the wire. So when we call read action, we actually want to send data from our application that has custom data in it. And we're going to call a function called get order search criteria. So when we call get order search criteria, let's look at our index page and scroll to our JavaScript code. We're just returning an object that has the state of our application in it. And this will go to our employee's controller and get bound against the employee quarter sales action. So this is where we will get our employee ID and our starts, uh, start from date on our query for the chart data. Next, we need to set up a schema so the tag helper can understand what type of data is coming across the wire. So we have several fields that come across. We have an order date, an order ID, a current target, and a target. And these are of date and number types. If these aren't set, they are interpreted as a string, and our chart would not work properly. Let's save this. And we've set auto bind to false. So we need to go back to our application and tell our app when to bind data to that chart. We're going to do this the same way we did for the grid. So let's create a reference to our UI element. We'll call it quarter sales. So we'll have UI.quarter sales, and that will find our employee quarter sales chart on the page. We already have an on criteria changed event that is triggered 
from whenever somebody selects filter criteria from the panel on the left hand side of the application. So when there's a date selected from either date picker or when an employee is selected from the tree view. When that fires, we want to say UI dot quarter sales dot read. So this will update the chart and do data binding to trigger the data binding on the chart itself. When the data is bound, we also want to fetch a piece of data from the sales chart and display it clearly for users. We'll do that using another function. We'll say on quarter sales data bound, and then we will fetch from the data source the value of the current data, and we'll set that to a label that's already on our page. So we can go right into the data that's being bound, and we'll find the current value format that as currency and display it to the user. Let's go back to our chart and we'll bind, we'll use this data binding event in our tag helper. So we can say on data bound and then we'll call on quarter sales data bound. Now we can open our application back up and refresh. And when the application loads, you can see we have a nice chart displayed on top of our application here and when we click through our team members that chart updates in real time as a single page application. Next let's add the monthly average sales. Jump back into our application code and we'll add the monthly sales chart. So I'll open up the partial for a monthly sales chart and remove the placeholder image. This time I'll copy and paste the code for the tag helper so you don't need to watch me type it all out again. It's going to be very similar to the chart tag helper we used before. So we'll say kendo chart. We'll give it a name. Set auto bind to false again because we're using client side code. We're going to set a custom data bound uh, method to display some of the data that's being bound from the chart. Our series default will be a line type of chart. And with the line chart, we'll set a category axis. This is going to be a date axis. We're also setting a value axis, which will be numeric. We have a data source with a read transport that looks at our employee average sales action on the employees controller and also passes our custom filter criteria using get order search criteria. Our model has, our schema has a model with a couple fields. We have a date, employee sales, and employee ID model fields. And these have date and numeric types. If these are not specified, they're interpreted as strings and our chart won't display correctly. In addition to this, we're adding aggregates. This is something else that we can do with the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. So we can aggregate items on the fly when they're data bound to a tag helper. So we're setting the field that we'd like to aggregate on. It's going to be employee sales, and we're going to average those values. Next, we'll go back to our index page, and we'll wire up the application code the same way we did before. So we'll add a UI reference. We'll call this reference average sales. So we'll say average sales and find the employee average sales chart that's on our page. We'll come down to our on criteria changed event and we'll say UI dot average sales dot data source and invoke the read action. We'll also add a custom function that will trigger when that chart is data bound. We'll say on average sales data bound. And we're going to set the label above the chart to the aggregated data that we're retrieving from the data source. If that data source happens to have no information, we'll go ahead and set a default value of zero. Now we can go back to our application and refresh. 
and our monthly average sales is now drawn on a nice line chart. You can see I have tooltips that show the amounts at those data points. This completes our application. Now we can drill into our data using our tree view on the left and our date pickers. We can specify date ranges and see our uh, grid view and our employee avatar and our charts all bound together with the same filtered data. This is an example of how you can create a single page application experience using Telerk UI for ASP.NET Core tag helpers.